I'm Tisha Bader with Shalom TV's news update for Thursday, January the 2nd, 2014. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu held a joint press conference in Jerusalem this evening on the occasion of Kerry's 10th visit to the region. Kerry arrived in Israel earlier today and will meet with Israeli Prime Minister this evening in Jerusalem. He will then travel to Ramallah to meet with Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas. Netanyahu said at the start of talks in Jerusalem today that there is some skepticism about the Palestinians' commitment to the peace process. There's growing doubt in Israel that the Palestinians are committed to peace. Adding that the Palestinians, quote, need to be prepared to truly end the conflict. Kerry, for his part, expressed hope for the process, saying that although the road ahead was a very difficult one, it was not a mission impossible. Kerry said he was encouraged that the parties remained engaged. He also praised Israel and Prime Minister Netanyahu for the recent release of a third batch of Palestinian security prisoners as a gesture for the peace process. Kerry's visit is another effort to push peace talks towards a framework or outline agreement between the Israelis and the Palestinians. Senior State Department officials said that Kerry was not anticipating any major breakthroughs at this point, but rather was hoping that the two sides could get closer to agreeing on an outline of what a final deal between them could look like. The New York Times said that such an outline or framework document is aimed at achieving enough of a convergence on core issues that the two sides can make headway toward a final peace agreement. A State Department official told the Times that once they have a shared vision of what that will look like, then it will become easier to finalize the details. Former Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon is said to be in critical condition in Israel. Sharon, who has been in a coma since he suffered a stroke nearly eight years ago on January the 4th of 2006. The former prime minister, who is now 85, has been under medical care at the Sheba Medical Center of Tel Shomer Hospital since then. Hospital director Professor Zev Rothstein told reporters this morning that there has been a serious deterioration in Sharon's condition in recent days due to a deterioration in the functions of his vital organs. Rothstein said the sense of the doctors and the family today is that there has been a change for the worse. Sharon's family is holding vigil at his side. And in regional Middle East news, a powerful explosion rocked Lebanon today, killing at least three people and wounding approximately 20 others. The powerful blast was reported in southern Beirut in the stronghold of the Shiite group Hezbollah. An unnamed official said the explosion appeared to be a car bomb, but, bomb rather, but that has not been confirmed. Israel's neighboring country has been hit by a wave of bombings in recent months as the civil war in Syria spills over into Lebanon. <laughs> Israel's President Shimon Peres was presented with a petition at the Knesset yesterday to free convicted Israeli spy Jonathan Pollard. The petition, which was signed by 106 Knesset members, calls for Pollard's release and was signed by both coalition and opposition members and was given to Paris by the caucus to free Jonathan Pollard, headed by Nachman Shai of the Labour Party and Ayala Shaked of Habayit HaYehudi, or the Jewish Home Party. Shaked said, rather called freeing Pollard a national issue, and said that all members of the Knesset, including Arab members, agree about it. She said it's the only issue where there is a complete consensus. The intent is for Paris to pass the petition along to U.S. President Barack Obama. According to a statement issued by Paris's office, the president said, it is both a right and a duty for me to bring before the president of the United States of America the request to free Jonathan Pollard, which comes with agreement from across the political spectrum. Paris added as president, it is my clear responsibility to voice such clear consensus. I do it with pride and see it as a duty and responsibility. Pollard recently began the 29th year of the life sentence he is serving in the U.S. for passing information to Israel. The Jerusalem Post reports that Israel announced plans to name a military facility in the country after former U.S. Senator Daniel Inouye, marking the first time a military facility would be named after a non-Israeli. 
In a way, a World War II veteran who passed away in December of last year was a staunch supporter of Israel and felt very close to the Israeli people. Israel plans to name an Arrow Defense Missile Facility in Inouye's honor on January the 14th. Inouye's wife Irene will be the honored guest of Israel's defense ministry at the ceremony. She will also present the inauguration of a scholarship in Inouye's memory at the Israel Arts and Science Academy in Jerusalem the following day. Former APAC President Robert Asher is helping coordinate the events. He told the Jerusalem Post that Inouye was Israel's greatest supporter in Congress and said that after Inouye died in 2012, Asher told Prime Minister Netanyahu that the country should do something in his memory. Haaretz reports that for the first time in Israel's history, the Religious Services Ministry transferred money into the bank account of the reform movement in Israel to cover the salaries of four community reform rabbis. The transfer of funds this week follows Israel's Supreme Court approval a year and a half ago to pay state salaries to non-Orthodox rabbis who lead congregations like their Orthodox counterparts. Rabbi Gilad Kariv, director of the reform movement in Israel, told Haaretz that the move was a historic and important step in the long struggle towards pluralism, religious freedom, and the recognition by the state of Israel of all branches of Judaism. Kariv said the reform movement will continue to act to redefine the relationship between religion and state in Israel and to separate the religious establishment from the authorities. However, he added, as long as the state continues to fund religious services and the salaries of rabbis, we will make sure that this is done on an egalitarian basis. WorldNet Daily reports that an Israeli researcher says she has identified fabric that may contain a blue dye described in the Bible. Naama Sukenik of Israel's Antiquities Authority said earlier this week that the recent examination of a small piece of wool found in the 1950s discovered that it was colored with a dye from a snail and believed to be the mysterious blue color called trelet in the Bible. Researchers believe that the snail called Murex trunculus was the source of the biblical blue, which in the Bible Jews are commanded to wear as fringe on their garments. Sukenik studied the wool and textile for a doctorate at Bar Ilan University and published her findings at a Jerusalem conference this past Monday. It is believed to be one of the few remnants of the ancient color ever found. And turning to our Shalom TV programming for tonight, Thursday, January the 2nd, a discussion from the recent 100th anniversary gala of the Anti-Defamation League begins at 7.30 on prejudices and politics in the U.S. And tonight on L'Chaim, Mark Golub is joined by the Israeli Consul for Media Affairs in New York City, Shachar Azani, who gives an Israeli perspective on life in Israel. That's tonight on Shalom TV and ShalomTV.com. And that's Shalom TV's news update for Thursday, January the 2nd, 2014. I'm Keisha Bader.